Um, we are streaming, we are recording, everything is well. We're in game. Oh, Jangri is quit. I hope he hasn't just forfeited the game. Let, let's get him back. I think it will just be one second to re-invite him to the lobby. I'm sure it's just a technical hitch. He gets the re-invite. There he is, excellent. Let's check our players already. We're going to game two. I'm very excited. Okay, that, I, that was a perfect <laughs> way to kick off the series. I completely agree. Here we are, another second TVP for you. Uh, Cambridge at the moment 1-0 up. Uh, we actually haven't really mentioned what's going on. It is Oxford versus Cambridge. It is the biggest uh, university rivalry in the world. Some say that's because of uh, rowing and the boat race. I like to say it's because of esports and StarCraft. Absolutely. Uh, the boat race was just a precursor, a warm up. Exactly. <laughs> this is the big event. And it's a pentathlon of uh, five games, StarCraft only being one of them. But let's talk about that later. Let's get into our second game and introduce the players. Down here on the southeast corner of our match, of our map. He's up 1 0 already. It's Cambridge Terran Aflex. And in the top right, we have our Oxford player, the Red Protoss. It is Jangbi. Woo! And as you were mentioning, this is, of course, a best of three between these two players. We've had one game already go to Jangbi. No, sorry, to Aflex. <laughs> it could have gone either way. It could have gone in either end, way. In, it my, in my mind, it's still, it's still up in the air. And so one more win for our Terran player will mean the match goes to him. Indeed, indeed. So, as we said, this is the verge of defeat for our Oxford player. I'll be interested to see what he goes for, therefore. Does he play it safe and solid? Because he was so, so close to winning last time. He could have just, you know, one extra storm or something and he would have won. Or will he, will he mix it up and go for a bit of cheese? It's interesting. So I, this map is, of course, great for more macro-based play. The four bases you see in each corner are very easy to defend with one big army and we could therefore see quite a long game with lots of bases. However, as a Protoss player, he might be more inclined to go for a quick tactic such as proxy gates or, or cheese, Indeed. or an oracle perhaps. But we are seeing the same sort of setup as we saw in game one, which is just a uh, gateway. Interestingly, from our Terran player, we see a gas first. So uh, I'm thinking either this is heavy, heavy Reaper uh, commitment, or probably it's a, a, a quick tech up the tech ladder to factory, and maybe a quick Banshee or Widow Mine drop, something like that. Uh, scouting, Terran's pick correctly. So a minor advantage in this game goes to Aflex. Unfortunately for our Protoss player, he's he's got to go home. He's, he's not going the right way. Precisely. However, the, the, the speed of the uh, scout from Terran should imply that the Terran will be in the bottom right, so the Protoss right. should know that at least. Um, and importantly, he, as he comes around, sorry, this is jerking all over around. We're on his player camp, so he's on. Um, he sees both pylons. One, two. So he knows that there's no like crazy hidden tech at the moment. He sees the cyber core, he actually sees a gateway being uh, boosted out, well not boosted out, being produced. Uh, maybe in defence uh, for this Reaper that's coming up. We'll see if it gets cancelled or, like last game, if he sends it across the map. Precisely, and we of course also know that the Terran has not scouted a second gas. There's no second gas on Protoss, so we're not going to see anything Indeed. too uh, aggressive like an Oracle build. Indeed. So, oh! Uh, where's the probe going? So the, <laughs> oh, the it's a scouting, warlock. Uh, yeah, the scouting is sometimes messed up by warlocks at ramps. So the probe That's a shame. We'll see if he actually gets any scouting information. The Reaper will get out, uh, but if he raises the depot, he'll see very, very little. He won't actually be able to see the factory or the double gas. This is quite a heavy tech commitment from our Terran player. Absolutely. So we might be seeing a move into perhaps uh, Widow Mine drops. <laughs> the probe is still getting messed up by the scouting. He's really confused. He's like, where is our Terran player? Did he think that this is the spawn? location. I think, I think he might have had a queued or something and he just sent it straight across. Uh, so he's not going to get anything done here really. We um, have a Reaper going into the Reaper main goes in the and, and this has been unscouted so far. This will be... Oh, he's burning his time. This is, this is the first our, our Protoss has seen of the Reaper, so he might be slightly confused. Oh, a delayed he reaction. Up a kill. That's a good good work from our Terran player. The Mothership caused quite out of position here. And with double, double Zella. And a second kill for the Reaper. So this has been very worth it so far. And he gets out. That's great. And he gets out, but there's been no scouting so far. Not that there is anything to scout. But what do we see here, Ben? We see cloaked banshees. And no SCV production. <laughs> this is looking 
grim. For uh, this, yeah, his economy could be a bit better, to be honest. Um, but we do see uh, quite an interesting. Oh, it's going to be cloaked banshees uh, against a kind of conservative protest with no stalkers and no. No, ro oh no, there's a robo. No, there's a robo. robo. So our protest is being very safe. He's expanded and got a robo, which of course produces observers, which can then scout the cloaked ban banshee. This is quite early uh, scouting factory there. I would maybe like to see it used for uh, building add-ons and things. Oh, Aflex knows who he's playing against. Uh, maybe <laughs> he's seen these zealots and he's getting worried. But he does now scout this um, this expansion uh, there. So he, he should know that aggression isn't isn't on its way that far that much. So our, uh, our Protoss, if he holds against this Cloak Banshee, is going to be quite ahead because he's got two Nexuses and, of course, a, a worker lead already. And so our Terran player is looking like he's very invested into this Banshee doing a lot of damage. Indeed. It's about to pop out and Cloak is, what, 50 seconds behind. He'll probably reach the, the main base of the Protoss just before it's done. Um, and let's see where the Observer is heading. There was one produced. Uh, it, might, going... it might just meet the Banshee, but it might be out of position by the time Cloak kicks in. It looks like it's just going to miss the Banshee, so we might see a little bit of damage getting done. But he needs to do quite a lot of damage because the focus is already seven probes ahead. Yeah. They miss each other here. The Banshee's undetected. However, the Reaper, a bit of a traitor Reaper, did draw the entire Protoss army back into the main base. However, it's it's going back to the front. So, let's see what this Reaper, uh, Banshee can get done. The probe damage, the probe count is well, oh, it's well, four kills so far. It's not bad. There is a, there is an over, uh, photon overcharge, so you could throw that down to try and protect against. Where's the Protoss army? It's very very slow. There's one stalker, and one sentry. goes down. And he can even no, pick up no the sentry anywhere near. He's going straight for the mineral line here. He doesn't want the sentries. He wants the juicy juicy probes, <laughs> and he's getting a lot. Look at this, nine well said, probes. Nine probes go down. And this... Where's the observer? Uh, <laughs> the, the, the second has been produced, so it should be on the way to the natural very soon. Oh, this is tragic for our Prodos player. There's a second observer. Here he comes, but... So this isn't ideal, but we have to remember behind this there is no second command centre for the Terran. And oh, some the nice working disparity is only two between our two players. He doesn't want to lose it. He does pick off the sentry and get out. This is quite nice, Micro. <laughs> But, you know, Maiko won't win you the game alone unless you also build SCVs, perhaps. And, you know, build some oh, more barriers. apologies, there is a second command centre, I missed that. Well, you know, it's not it's not mining, and uh, I, I think actually the Protoss economy is much stronger than Terran's at this stage. And in stage. full Aflex style, we have a lot of energy on one of our Nexuses, so he's really saving those mules or scans, should there be DTs or... Yeah. Oh, he's almost, the game. he's almost got maximum energy, that's a crime as a Terran player there. Oh, and the oh, double banshee. Double banshee. Uh, there's just only one stalker. I think the cracks are showing from a Protoss player. He has, he's Ooh. had the photon overcharge for all of this engagement. Oh, and oh there we go. can the banshee now. get out? Oh. These these banshees are doing quite a lot of work. One kill and 19, 19 kills, kills between them, which is quite impressive. However, the SCV production is a bit lacking. The mule usage. Oh, finally three of them got cooled down. There's the mule hammer for them. For them. Uh, <laughs> and that's going to help because he's got a massive gas bank at the moment at 560 gas, which he would like to even up with some minerals so that he can spend it. That's true. I like his decision to pull back these banshees and get them repaired. They can really, with two, two cloaked banshees, they can go back in later and do some real damage. Yeah, as part of a main army, they do have a lot of DPS behind them. Here's his uh, gas expenditure, hopefully. Um, but he's on he's on three uh, sorry two bases, and he's got three barracks and one uh, one star port. He really needs to throw down some more production. I feel at this Absolutely. stage. Absolutely, and he's not really converting his economic advantage into a, a physical advantage because the supply lead is still in uh, Protoss's favour. Third banshee goes in, gets three kills, uh, and the Colossus production is is well underway with thermal lance. Uh, against that, we have 1 1 coming down for Terran, which uh, will actually get him a nice upgrade lead uh, over the Protoss player. Absolutely, and we don't see a reactor for that starport, and so whilst he's incrementing out Medivacs, he'll be behind on his Viking production, which he'll need to deal with this Colossus tech. Ooh, this is actually quite a sexy push out. It's uh, three Banshees as part of the main army, as well as some bio. Uh, unfortunately, well, 1 1 won't be done. Stim, Stim has been completed already, which is nice. Um, we'll see what upgrades are going to have been completed by the time these two forces clash. Uh, for sure, Thermal Lance won't be done, 
so we might be able to stim in and uh, take out these uh, Colossi. Absolutely, and we're seeing a big lack of anti-air. So once those stalkers are gone, he could definitely snipe a Colossus, perhaps with his, with his uh, Banshees. Double pronged aggression here. Which one's going to hit first? So it looks like the Protoss responds to the Banshee pressure, and the drop is going to go uncontested in the back here. He gets well, a great, one hell of an Artosis pilot. There. It's gone down. Let's see what gets done here. The Colossus is quite late uh, to join the party. Here comes and he's the moved his whole army back to defend, which leaves his natural open to further aggression. A great escape from our Terran player. That was great. But look at this. Yes, he's actually targeting down the Nexus. Oh, he he got, and there's no observer. He needs to move the observer to scout the, the Banshees. Banshees. But no, they're gonna get it. Goes it's down, and he's actually targeting now on the stalkers. He could clean up. I don't think there's enough stalkers to take two men. Oh, oh he's they're going. targeting the Colossus. Oh, oh, indecision from our Terran player there. Indecision. In the meantime, his one one's finished, but there's no armory. He still has no production. It's, it's the macro <laughs> that's uh, holding our Terran up. He's still behind in supply, which is phenomenal. Yeah, his tactical uh, decision making, his choice of engagements is, is, is actually phenomenal. It's excellent. Um, I'm thinking he's probably Grandmaster Smurfing as a, as a platinum That's player all we here. Can assume. Uh, and look at this, he's loading up for more drops. He's just not letting up with this Banshee harass, with the drops. Uh, this is just very, quite a solid performance. A pause. A pause from our Protoss player. Uh, Ooh, time to settle the nerves. Sort that out. Hopefully he's okay. Uh, maybe he's just reeling from the uh, from the yeah, banshee pressure. Sort of, I mean, that's got to give you shakes. That kind of multi-pronged attack. It does. It's hard it to deal with. It was excellent. Uh, oh, and looks like we're ready. To ready to go. go. And we're and back, back, in. back in. Fantastic. This is what I like to see: some more barracks being thrown down by our Terran player. But we we mentioned that Aflex his 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 uh, his game back at home is letting him himself down. And look at the supplies. He's actually behind for all the damage he's done. For all of that sick Nexus sniping, the probe kills with the Banshee, with the Reaper, with everything. He's actually behind. That's this quite the top out isn't looking too scary against two Colossi and a bunch of Stalkers. I don't think it's yeah. going to get the damage done that he needs. This drop, however, is doing some great, great, great extra work. Uh, he's focusing down the Colossus then, and I think he's going to get it. In the meantime, oh, he's scanning the front. He's going for the Nexus. Oh, and he's going to probably get it. The Protoss moved his entire army back to out. defend. What a great move again from our talent. Oh no! Now he's going for probes. He it's doesn't get decision again from Aflex. Yes, he he his one one weakness in this matchup. But he is doing some some fantastic damage. And the Protoss, he just really is, has one A syndrome at this point. And he's and the talent has identified that the observer is out of position and is going for that for that Nexus. One. Yeah, there's no observers here. This is going down. And the second Nexus will be sniped by close Banshees. And oh, oh incredible moves from our Tyrant. He's picking the Protoss apart. Oh, he's actually, this is quite ambitious, this Marauder. <laughs> there's two Marauders. They've, they've gotten it down to almost half health. <laughs> which, is, you know, that's that's pretty good. Oh, a the cheeky hidden bird. bird. But we're going for a GG. The Protoss player knows when he's beaten. And our talent player for Cambridge takes the series 2-0. That is a very convincing 2-0, I would say, from our uh, Terran player. And uh, Cambridge takes the lead. 1-0 in this uh, best of five Absolutely. Uh, between Oxford and Cambridge. Very, very good games. I think they were both very exciting, action-packed. Um, our Protoss player was let down perhaps by his ability to defend the multi-pronged aggression. I think so. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in our next game. I think, you know, this game showed that while economy is important, the coolest thing about StarCraft is the micro, is the tactical engagements, and that's where Aflex shine. Absolutely. Shines. He was able to just use incredible micro to, yeah. to pick part of Protoss players. Yeah. And, you know, that was a great uh, game one, or sorry, match one, out of our five match uh, best of five. Um, we will be playing all five games uh, to let all the players compete. And, of course, the final the final uh, players are our best players, so we save the best to last. They're Masters players. So we've just done some Platinum action. I think the next game is Platinum verging on Diamond, if not Diamond. Yes, I think it's Diamond. Um, and it's going to be a TVP again, I think. Yes, do we know who playing? We do. I know uh, Stefan from Cambridge. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a solid player. He just, I think he, he just hit, oh yeah, he just hit rank one diamond uh, yesterday for his uh, training. And from Oxford, who do we have? 
so I am not sure what this is. You're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Someone. Uh, we can check on if here. It's a Terran, I think it's it Roland. Be... Oh, Roland. So this is going to be a ZVZ. No, a PVZ. Z PVZ. No. Okay. I'm reading the list the wrong way up. Okay. It's a Terran. Ben. It's you. It's me. I'm playing. <laughs> what, are you... <laughs> what are you doing here, Ben? <laughs> Okay, I'm playing next, and then I will be playing a Protoss, no, I believe. No, what? But here now it says Will Barnes. So, I, as you can tell, this has not, okay. been, this is, this is, this this is not been clearly laid out for us. Uh, uh, there are some people behind the scenes. I think we've had some shenanigans here. While Cambridge have listed their team from uh, uh, bottom to top in terms of ability, Oxford have sneakily done it in reverse order. Uh, uh, so just just on, this, on this on this spot. So you're actually the second best player from Oxford, then? I Give yourself some credit. Oh, fine, then I'm probably the second best player from all It's not the best. It's not um, the best. Okay. It's of course a very tightly packed team. It's all diamond players, really. So there's a lot of a, a lot of toing and throwing. Oh, great. So yeah, some dynamics there. In which case, you'll be playing fourth for Oxford. So Ben isn't next. So uh, do you fancy staying and doing the next uh, games casting? Yeah, it'd be a pleasure. I'm sure that some other people might want to step in as well. If indeed, that would that would be fun. They want. In which case, for all our preamble. We will have a second uh, P V Z. No, <laughs> a first P V Z. A first P V Z. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this time with Cambridge having a Protoss and Oxford having a Zerg. Excellent. Oh, that is way too common. I think our brain, or my brain, at least, is fried. You know. Absolutely. I think this, this casting Starcraft and such crazy games is uh, harder than Tripos exams. I, harder. I would, I would say so. Then again, many things are. <laughs> many things are. <laughs> Right, in which case, let us uh, pause the stream, get stuff back under control, and uh, get the hype match. going for game two. Excellent. Cool. Stay tuned, guys, for game two, uh, match two, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be great coming up. <laughs>